Hey traders, welcome back. So we're talking technicals and today specifically in this video, we're talking about the head and shoulders pattern and the inverse head and shoulders too. We'll flip it on its head. As always with these kind of things, this is my flavor on it, my take rightly or wrongly. We're gonna look at the textbook definition as well, put them together, put them on the whiteboard, discuss it, talk about how we can potentially use it as a strategy and how you could use it with your own trading, whether you add your own twist to it, whether you don't use it, whether you add bits of it, whatever. That's the point, important thing about trading is to add it so that it suits your personality and your method. If you agree with what we talk about, then leave a comment below. If you disagree and you have a better way of approaching it, then also leave a comment below because I love to hear about what you think about the head and shoulders pattern. Okay, so let's look at the definition then we'll draw it on the whiteboard. So. What is a head and shoulders pattern? It says here in technical analysis, a head and shoulders pattern describes a specific chart formation that predicts a bullish to bearish trend reversal. It's believed to be one of the most reliable trend reversal patterns. It is one of several top patterns that signal with varying degrees of accuracy that an upward trend is nearing its end. Right, let's talk about it, put it on the screen. Now, where, which pen shall I use for this? Let's use the good old red pen. So the head and shoulders pattern is we're gonna drive up, it fails. We get a second drive that goes higher, rolls back down, drive up, lower. Now you can see why it's called head and shoulders because this part here is the head. This part here is the left shoulder. And this part here is the right shoulder. Now the important thing here also to add is that this is, and I've kind of done it on a bit of an angle here, but it should really be straight. But in the real world, uh, you're often gonna get it kind of pivoted like that. So you get your shoulder, your head. So it may well be angled, maybe angled like this. It may not be symmetrical. So maybe it's quite a good thing to have it a little bit off kilter here. But this here now um, is known as your neckline. Okay, now again, this is textbook stuff, guys. It doesn't matter what you call it or how you you know do it. As long as it works for you, that's a whole thing, man. I'm really not one of these people that says, oh, you've got to definitely call it this and you've got to definitely call it that. It's got to be specific. That's not the real world. It's about how it works for you. And let's talk about the actual, the participants and what's behind the pattern as to why it works. Now, it works because it just makes sense from a logical perspective and it's quite a powerful pattern because what you we kind of got here is uh, the first initial pulse which is your left shoulder so the price is driving up it's found the point where the, the, the supply demand balance has shifted so buyers have become less aggressive sellers have become more aggressive they buyers can't get a higher print and we roll over now this could be deeper than that it could be shallower than that again there's a little bit of a, 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 a variation to it so it comes lower it pushes to the downside, puts in this kind of low here, and I'm gonna put 0.2 here. This might get confusing in a minute, but I'm sure you can keep up with this, um, this whiteboard diagram I'm doing, not to scale. Comes back to two, puts a low in, pushes up. Now, this point is where it gets interesting because what you've got is if you just looked at, at this side, forget that, all you would have is an uptrend, right? Push up higher, pull back, breakthrough highs. It comes back and it breaks through this little high here and you're all, you're up and you're away again. So at this point in time, you've got to remember, and this is the thing about chart patterns, guys, is you've got to kind of not get sucked into, uh, and I'm guilty of this as well, when you look at something in hindsight, you see the whole pitch, you think, well, that's obvious, right? It's just an obvious pattern. But remember that when you see it, I'm gonna try and cover it up. I'll, try, I'll cover it up with the iPad if I can. That's what you're looking at when you're seeing it form. So you're seeing the push up higher, the lower, and even up to there, it's still like an uptrend with a pullback and uptrend. So you can't front run this thing because it's it's looking like a pretty standard uptrend thing. It's not looking like a reversal at all. However, when you start to get things a bit more interesting, then you can perhaps front run them. So come at three, that's the head. And then the important thing about the head is it's breaking above the shoulder. It's putting it a little bit high. Now, what does that mean from a supply demand perspective and from uh, you know, a sell side, a buy side? It means that the buyers still think this is good value. They think it's value above the last high level. That was just a pause. Sellers are kind of thinking, well, I can get a higher price. I'm gonna back off a little bit more. They're backing off, backing off. Buyers are getting aggressive, causing the price to tick up. Of course, for every buyer, there is a seller, but the more aggressive the buyer is, the higher the price because they're paying up, paying up, paying up, causing the new price print. Comes up, makes another high here at 0.3 
rolls over. Looking pretty standard uptrend stuff at the moment. However, now we come back and not only do we go through this kind of prior high level here, if that lines up, but we also test this low at number two here. So I'm gonna label that as four. So four matches to within kind of a few ticks. Sometimes you're gonna get a breakthrough. Sometimes it might not go there. The market's not gonna oblige and give us the exact tick. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so we push through, and this is the kind of important part of this chart pattern, because at this point, things have turned on their head a little bit. Not quite reversal yet, but it's time to be alerted. Because this deep pullback, you would assume that if it was a genuine uptrend, you are only gonna pull back to kind of this, this sort of level here, right? You're not gonna pull back. Maybe you have a little sneak and, and use that as support, but you wouldn't think that you're gonna pull back all that way. Of course, you could now carry on and push all the way up here. I don't wanna draw it in too much to confuse the pattern, but you, get, you could still do that. Of course you could. However, what happens now is crucial. So buyers are perceived there's no value up above three. It's pushed lower, sellers think that's great value. But point four here, buyers have stepped back in and said, you know what, it's good value again. It's cheaper than it was from two to three all the way, also two to four. Still think it's good value, they step in. Now this time, this is where I like thinking about the patterns in a bit more depth. And again, appreciate your, what your comments and thoughts are of how this pattern works and, and all that kind of stuff. But we then push back up. And at point five here, this is where sellers think, I think this is good value. I don't wanna wait for it to come all the way up to point three again. I'm gonna start selling it a little bit earlier. I'm gonna start selling it around point one. And of course they're not probably thinking point one or point three, but, they're, but the way their logic is thinking is that, hey, I wanna get short this, I wanna sell my stock, I wanna sell my long, whatever it may be, whatever your uh, objective is as a seller in this scenario. I don't wanna wait for three because I think that now's the time to do it. Buyers as well are thinking, you know what, I don't wanna be so aggressive as I was earlier. I've changed my mind, I don't wanna pay up. Or they've filled their orders or whatever it may be. Of course, we're not talking about one guy, we're talking about hundreds, thousands, whatever it may be. So at that point there, sentiment is changing. This is the key point for me is here, is where sentiment changes around this kind of level. It doesn't push higher, it doesn't re-attack that head and it rolls back over. Now the textbook will tell you that the official head and shoulders is you take a short here or you sell your long as it breaks the neck the neckline, okay? Um, that's on a complete right angle there, but I'm sure you can just about see that. So as it breaks that neck, neckline here, that's when you go short. That's the official line for it. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because that is the point where you've not only have you had the topping pattern, but you've also broken the support. Now for me, I like to be a little bit more aggressive and people, you may be watching this going, well, that's ridiculous because it doesn't match the head and shoulders pattern. Accept it, appreciate that. I understand exactly what you're saying and I do not disagree. However, for me, if I can get a little bit of a head start with it, I know that I'm gonna get stopped out a lot of times in this, but if I can look at it independently and say, well, this is the point where I believe the pattern is gonna happen. I might have a little nibble on the short side with a stop above that shoulder, or I might have a little nibble jumping on some momentum, if I can see some momentum in there. Now this may be more from a day trading perspective as opposed to a swing trading perspective. It makes perfect sense from a swing trading perspective to kind of wait for that break and, and strategize around that. But for me, I might jump on some momentum here. I might look to kind of front run that. Then, I'm gonna decide depending on obviously, that you know, this is the thing with chart patterns, guys. We're isolating just this pattern. However, it's very important as to what's happened over here. You know, have we been in a monster uptrend? Have we been in a chop environment? You know, you can't, sometimes you can't isolate this on its own without looking at the prior thing, but that's, that, that's a separate topic completely. So then you may well add to the position here. You may scale some out into the, into the, into the sellers here. You know, you've got some options there. But anyway, that's the, that's the head and shoulders pattern. You've got the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, the, the, the process of the buyers and sellers agreeing, disagreeing, and, and changing the levels as they do. So very quickly, this is your inverse head and shoulders. You've got your push lower, uh, and that's kind of how it is. So your neckline becomes there. So there's your first shoulder here. There's your head. And there's your 
I'm going to put your headers three, keep it, keep it the same. Uh, and there's your break here. So you go long on the break here and then either have your stop here or you'd have your stop under there, depending on how risk averse or however it fitted into your trading. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Give me your comments below what you think of the head and shoulders pattern. Do you think this is the right way of looking at it or do you have another better way of looking at it? We'd love to hear your thoughts on it, how you integrate it into your trading. And if this is the sort of video that you want to see more of, then hit the subscribe button because we've got more technical videos, discipline, psychology, strategy, all that good stuff from me coming up in the next few weeks and months. Take care.